I think for me, the concern at the moment would be around the the governance and the management of the use of AI in fire safety. So because we don't have the official channels to use AI in terms of, to my knowledge, and someone please message me on LinkedIn if I've got this wrong, but there aren't that many fire safety companies out there that have these AI models. So people are probably using ChatGPT. And that's really concerning for me. So if I uh, was responsible for fire safety within an organization, people could be using ChatGPT to produce the documents. And I'll give you an example. It's very easy to go to ChatGPT. Um, ChatGPT, what is the relevant British standard or what guidance should I be looking at for X scenario? And it will provide that guidance. But as you say, it's currently behind a paywall. So ChatGPT won't have actually seen the British standard it will have seen a third hand interpretation of that that it's found online and that's a real concern for me because then it's like how do we as an industry um, ensure that this is correct and that this information is correct i think the first question um, really is, is is what is ai you know it's a term that seems to be thrown around a lot these days with companies rebranding old technology as, as AI. Um, what, what, what does AI mean to you, if I come to you first, Adam? Um, yeah, well, I think the thing is it can mean so much, can't it? It's For a lot of people, it's using chat GPT uh, to go and get get an answer for something that they can't be bothered to, to type up or, for, or do the research for themselves, or because they're struggling to, to write something. Um, even if they've got the knowledge, it's kind of easier to use AI to to build those or G, uh, Chat GPT to build those prompts for you. But I, th I think for me, it's it's much wider than that. It's it's managing lots of data and it's being able to query lots of data. Uh, and I think there's there's a huge difference between using Chat GPT, which is just using whatever it finds on Google, versus kind of enterprise AI where you're creating something for your own business or your own requirements which is going to be quite specific yes yeah, are you see it peter yeah i love this question george thanks very much i mean i'm a safety professional so our cto at intuity is gonna it's gonna be cringing when he listens to this answer but obviously we met up at the nec show and when you went up to the uh in, in uh, when was it, a couple of months ago, the health and safety show, and almost every single stand had some reference to AI on it up at the health and safety side. And like Adam said, it's, you know, it's everywhere at the moment, but it's, now when I Googled it, it says perform a task that would take human intelligence, but I like to think that we're moving way beyond that. Otherwise, that means it can do what we can already do. But yeah, you're looking at LLMs, large language models, machine learning, artificial intelligence, uh, Art, a generative artificial intelligence so it's there's so many aspects to to ai and i think that's the exciting for me is like the exciting thing is like how can we bring that into fire safety to improve to go beyond what we can already do as humans well yeah i mean it, in the world of fire safety how 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 can it be used at the moment um you know, I've heard of people using it to help them review reports and things. I think that's something that you, you both talked on the, at that show. Um, yeah, I'd be interested to hear more about your sort of thoughts and experiences to how it how it is being used um, at the moment. But I think we've got we've certainly got quite a few clients that are using it for for the review um, and to suggest to them, have you considered these things? But the problem is the data isn't there. To do that particularly effectively it's it's a it's a little bit of a backup it's a bit of an aid memoir um and i think for, for a lot of people or for for the people that are using it it's quite fun um you know we i mean i don't but the fire safety world does some quite interesting stuff and most of that interesting stuff is going out visiting things thinking about things talking to peers about it the really boring bit is sat back at the office trying to write it up and trying to convey those thoughts in as simple language as possible to the end user, who often isn't technical. Um, and I think at the moment, one of the things that AI is quite good at is digesting some text and saying, you know, and asking it, 
how can I make this clearer? It's not necessarily, is it technically correct, but how can I make it clearer? And I think that's, that's really effective for a lot of people. Asking AI to write something for you, I think is generally terrible. Uh, and, and I can spot it a mile off and I get really frustrated. It's, it's got no character to it. It's got very little flow, but in terms of content, it's, it's really cool. Um, but I don't think there are many people in the fire world that are doing much more than that. Um, I mean, at the show, we, we had, um, Tom on from Tennyson Suite, who's created his own GPTs, which I think at the moment for most people is the best you can do in a, in a small business. Yes, there's some much bigger, cooler stuff you can do. But in terms of, look, do you know what? I'm going to go and put ADB in a whole load of British standards. And I'm going to put that into my own custom GPT. And then I can ask it specific questions rather than me having to wade through it. That's, you know, it's a time saver. It's not, it's not really replacing humans. It's not replacing knowledge because you kind of know where that information is. It's just the time that it takes you to get to it and to be able to extract some specific wording. Um, yeah. So I think that there's so much the fire sector can do, but I'm not sure we're doing that much with it other than scratching the surface. Yeah, I think that concept of sort of uploading uh, British standards and guidance and legislation up to a up to a language model, um, which some of those sort of behind a paywall at the moment, so you won't get it from from ChatGPT. And um, yeah, and 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 doing that, uploading it to a model, and then using that to you know like like a like a colleague to chat to and, and, and it can pinpoint those exact bits and, and be a faster method and, and tell you where to look. That 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 interests me quite a lot as, as something that seems quite viable. Um, I, don't, I don't know what your thoughts are, Peter, if there's any more um, you think can be done at the moment. Yeah, so I think I think for me the concern at the moment would be around the the governance and the management of the use of AI in fire safety. So because we don't have the official channels to use AI in terms of, to my knowledge, and someone please message me on LinkedIn if I've got this wrong, but there aren't that many fire safety companies out there that have these AI models. So people are probably using ChatGPT. And that's really concerning for me. So if I uh, was responsible for fire safety within an organization, people could be using ChatGPT to produce the documents. And I'll give you an example. It's very easy to go to ChatGPT. Um, ChatGPT, what is the relevant British standard or what guidance should I be looking at for X scenario? And it will provide that guidance. But as you say, it's currently behind a paywall. So ChatGPT won't have actually seen the British standard it will have seen a third hand interpretation of that that it's found online and that's a real concern for me because then it's like how do we as an industry um ensure that this is correct and that this information is correct so i think this is somewhere where we and and this is not meant to be a negative right i'm not negative towards ai i'm really excited about ai but it's for us as a profession and a sector to catch up really really quickly because i think we have got a lot of catching up to do yeah i think if i butted in there though i think one of one of my worries as well is even if british standards we talked about this the other day if bsi turned around and said okay here's a plug in you can now query all our standards with AI. What we don't want to end up is the fire sector going any further down a route where we're trying to tick boxes and saying, well, do you know what? To be, to be safe, you've got to tick every single British standard compliance box. You know, I think the, the cool work that gets done is when somebody says, look, actually, here's a standard uh, and it says, this is our ideal position, but I believe the risk is really here. And you're, you're mitigating these risks. So you don't need to do everything that's specified, you know, in BS, whatever it is. So I think that's a slightly dangerous route. What we want is to upskill surveyors, assessors, engineers, so that they're doing less donkey work and putting their application skills to use better. Well, so moving from like the checklist style into an actual risk management function. An evaluation of risk. Checklists are great, but it's the context that sits behind the checklist that's important. Yeah, I think the big concern is, is when you 
question it and it is wrong, it's got the same confidence as when it's right and it doesn't give you any indication that, um, that it's made it up and yeah, I've seen it make up references and things before and just, just completely out of thin air that, that all look very believable. You, you can ask it, by the way, though. You can test it. Like, so if you are going to use it for this, and I'm, by the way, I'm not endorsing it because I, I, I don't like the idea of using open LLMs for this, uh, this type of work just because of the risks. But you can say, look, what is the relevant guidance and can you please provide me with the reference where I can find it? And then you can go and do your own due, due diligence. You know, so there, there, there are some workarounds, but it's 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 not it's not perfect for the industry that we operate in and the, the level of risk in the industry that we operate in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and you spoke a bit about sort of data earlier and how the data isn't there. If if the data was there and we had everything gathered and uh, I think fire industries, you know, different to other industries in the amount of data that's that's available, but um yeah, I'd watch a bit about how other industries are using it, and if we had that data available in the in the fire industry, if if there are any ways you think that that we could be using it in the future that, that could be quite powerful. If I come to you first, Adam. And I think, I guess there's kind of two sets of data that we're looking at here. In my mind, there's going out and saying I'm doing some kind of a report on a building, whether that's a fire risk assessment, a strategy, or whatever. What what do I need to consider? Here's some information about a building. It's this tall. It's made of this. It's whatever. And it will say, well, actually, you know, with that kind of occupancy, you know, here's here's some things that you need to consider or here's some more information I definitely need. And then an AI model could lead somebody down a path and go, you know, based on all of the other fire strategies, all of the other risk assessments I've seen for buildings that are similar to this, these are the things that seem to, to, to be key key topics or key risks or controls but then there's the other side of it in terms of buildings that have been modeled um, and also existing fires existing um what's the word emergencies that have happened that have occurred that need to be analyzed now if we get that fire, that information from the fire service and if we can start to get that in structured data then I think you can do some some really cool stuff because actually we can start to back it up and say, well, actually, point not 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 two percent of fires are related to this, but it would require the fire services to start to pick that information up, and ideally also, you know, near misses as well, fires that don't the fire services aren't called to uh, to also get picked up. So it it really requires a massive amount of transparency from lots of people. Um, and in a world where we're all finger pointing at each other all the time and blaming each other, that that becomes quite difficult. And it also requires lots of open standards. You know, when we look at what's happened with the Building Safety Act and the Fire Safety England regulations, we can't even get, you know, each of the um, fire and rescue services to to come up with one system for everybody to enter the information into, let alone have consistent information that wants to be gathered or captured. Um, so I think, I think, well, to be fair, I think there's probably some things that, that the membership and the governing bodies could, could really do here. Yeah, I think you know, there's, there's a big desire to certainly have, um, a lot more information publicly available, both from, um, uh, existing fires that happened and then the fire fact reports, as well as from, from fire testing and that data. But, um, getting there, I think, uh, is, is a big challenge. There's lots of hurdles that need to be, um, resolved with that but um yeah if i had sort of asked the same question to you pete if we did get across that you know do, do you think there's some 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 big uses for ai in, in the fire sector yeah absolutely it's, it's a great question i honestly don't have an easy answer because it's it, it is a challenging like data has always been a challenge within health and safety and fire safety you know it's a challenge we're not traditionally very good at it in terms of collecting it uh sanitizing it controlling it and sharing it uh, and i think this is this is where this is where ai can actually help us to solve the problem of data but one of the things that i do look at with data say we say we forget like the numerical data you know in terms of like spreadsheets of numbers say we go to data in terms of information 
could AI help us with golden thread? Yeah, absolutely. Could it help us with KBI registrations? Yeah, absolutely. Could it help the regulator who has been, they must have been inundated with hundreds of thousands of pieces of data, hundreds of thousands of pieces of information to actually start to draw some correlations and look at risk rather than what we, the, the elements that we perceive to be high risk may not actually be high risk because no one's ever done a deep dive into that much information. I, I would almost say that the, Submissions to the regulator recently are probably one of the biggest collations of building and safety and fire safety data and information that we've ever done as a profession, as a country. So that's something that could you potentially look at utilizing AI in the future to do some analysis of that and actually give us some really great information as an industry, as a profession? Yeah, I think we could. I think there's some real opportunities there.